So welcome to lesson number one, module nine of the Big Data and Hadoop Developer course. In this lesson, we will be talking about the need for Flume. So before we begin the lesson, let's have a quick recap of the previous module. So in the previous module, we talked about Scoop and we learned what exactly is Scoop, the internal architecture of Scoop, how Scoop can efficiently export and import data between RDBMS systems and Hadoop. And we also saw the practical examples of importing data from RDBMS into HBase, HDFS and Hive using Scoop. So in this lesson, we'll be understanding the need for Flume and what are the, what are the advantages of Flume. So first, let's see what are some of the problems that we face in the real world now there are multiple ways in which you can actually transfer data from an external system into hadoop we have we have already seen one tool called scoop well scoop allows an rdbms system to connect to hadoop and transfer the structured data the second method is that that you can manually copy the data if the file is present with you in, in the local file system. However, many times we, we might face a situation where we, we have to take data from external systems and can continuously dump it in, into Hadoop. We, we call such, such such type of data as streaming data. For example, Think about something like application server logs, social networking files, or GPS tracking systems, etc. So all these systems continuously generate data. To get you an idea, if you look at a web server, a web server produces log files every second maybe multiple log files every three second and and the key to the business success is, is analyzing this particular log file file now, now we understand that that the web server might be sitting in in one place and hadoop will be sitting in another another place we need a we need need a solution using that we can efficiently transport these log files from the web server into hadoop as in when it is generated. Now you might argue that, well, we, we can manually copy the same. I, I, I would say that, that that's highly ineffective since the logs, logs, logs in the log, log servers gets produced just every second. Manually copying is not, not an efficient way. The second method most people think, think about is writing a, a script. Possibly I can write a script which will automatically collect these log data every every now and then and then and then and co co copy that into, into my, my local system or some something. Well, well man managing scripts is, is very difficult, especially when you have hundreds of, of application or web servers. So the pro problem here is that the, the data is, is not con constant. You know, it, it keeps on generating every second or, or, or every millisecond. And that is why, why we call it as streaming data. So we need, we need an effective system which can tra transfer the data as in when it is generated without lo losing it into Hadoop as a flow. And that is, is exactly what Flume is going, going to do. So, so you, usually the data that is in our concern is, is things, things, things such as log, log files, event streams, etc. Now the real, real problem is how do we collect large data streams coming in, in from different high throughput servers continuously and feed it into Hadoop. Now, now if I have to give, to give you another example, imagine that you want to pull all the tweets which are for, for Barack Obama today and, and dump it into Hadoop. Now, first, first problem that we, we have is that we, we need an efficiency system to search and, and categorize the feed for, for Barack Obama, let's say, and then, then it should be, be continuously transported into, into Hadoop. 
Now, now, if you look at the ar architecture of Hadoop, we understand that usually ev every file is treated independently. Now, if, if I have to take every tweet as it, it, it is and dump it into Hadoop, if there are, there are 1 million tweets, there will be, be 1 million individual fi files in Hadoop. That means my, my, my name node has to remember 1 million, million locations. I will still simply chalk my, my name node to death by implementing such a strategy. So we don't want all the individual small log files or stream files to come into Hadoop as it is. We need a system which can bundle it over a period of time and dump it into Hadoop. So let's see how this can be achieved. Well, the solution is called Flume. Flume started as a project in Cloudera and later it was taken by Apache and now it is an open source Apache project. Flume is a distributed, reliable and available service for efficiently collecting aggregating and moving large amounts of streaming data into, into HDFS. Now, the advantage of Flume is that it can connect to a variety of sources to pull the data. Like, like you see from the picture, it can pull tweets specific to Twitter data. It can pull server logs from application servers and web servers. It can specifically work with tools like Log4j to collect logs or syslog. It can connect to your social media streams and collect raw text files. It can even connect your spool directory and copy whatever is there in a particular directory. So whatever is your use case, Flume has a solution to collect the data. And it not only just collect these small pieces of data, it can aggregate it and put it inside your HDFS or HBase. Now, when you want to store the data, there also Flume gives you a lot of options. You can either directly store it into your Hadoop, that is HDFS, or a real-time system such as HBase. Now, what exactly Flume does? It gets streaming data from multiple sources into Hadoop for storage and analysis. Now, now this can be from a variety of sources, like I discussed, log files, Twitter data, social media data, etc. Horizontal scalability in case the data streams and volume increase. Now you can configure something called a Flume agent, which is completely scalable depending upon the amount of data that you want to stream. And buffer storage for transient spikes in incoming data with incoming data exceeds the rate at which data can be transferred. What that means is that whenever you're collecting data, let's say you're collecting log files. Imagine that at the peak hour of the day, the number of log files have tremendously increased. Now, when you design a system for effectively transporting this into Hadoop, you don't want to miss any single log entry, right? However, thank God that Flume has a very effective channel system which can accommodate the real-time spikes and transfer them effectively and assurance of data delivery and typically used for log data generated by high throughput data sources. Now, what are some of the advantages of Flume? First of all, it is scalable, reliable and customizable. Now, if you have a situation where you want to collect streams from hundreds or even thousands of servers, you can have multiple layers of Flume agents running. That means you can design a system where multiplexing is in, play, in place. In the first layer, you can have a number of Flume agents collecting individual logs from individual application servers. Then I can multiplex this data into a different set of Flume agents, thus reducing the overhead. And it can scale to a really large number of servers or sources and it is reliable and customizable in case if you come up with a solution where you don't have a built-in support available from Hume, you can always customize Flume with your own requirements. Uh, declarative and dynamic configuration. Now, Flume works in the concept of something called an agent. An agent is simply a JVM which has Flume in it. 
So the agent can be declared using a simple text file. So it is declarative in syntax, meaning I can simply edit a text file which represents a Flume agent and change my configuration the way I want and Flume will behave accordingly. Contextual routing. This means in a very complex Flume topology, I can use routing to read the header information and send the packet wherever I want. Maybe you are collecting log files from two servers using a Flume agent. Now, in that case, you might want the logs from server number one to directly go into HDFS and the logs from server number two to go to HBase for real-time analysis. Now, Flume events come with something called a header data. Now, you can mark every event with a header and you can prioritize this data events in the header. Now, contextual routing is a concept by which you can read the header and actually distribute the incoming events into wherever you want to go. For example, if a particular data stream comes, Flume can actually read the header and say that, hey, you are priority one, you just go to HBase. The next stream comes, it can read the header and say that, hey, you are priority two, let me analyze you later, you directly go to HDFS. So contextual routing enables us to effectively distribute the incoming uh, data streams into different locations based on the rules we have defined. Now, it's also feature-rich, fully extensible and uh, open source, meaning day by day there are new extensions and APIs that are being written for Flume and it supports more and more sources uh, in the days coming. Now, using Apache Flume, we can store the data into any of the centralized storage such as HBase and HDFS. Uh, when the rate of incoming data exceeds the rate at which data can be returned to the destination, Flume acts as a mediator between data producer and centralized storage and provide a steady flow. Now, in case if your Flume agent or Flume crashes, it can restart and it can read from where it has stopped, thus preventing failures. It also has contextual routing like we discussed before. Now, we have something called as a channel inside Flume. We'll be looking at it in detail, but what the channel basically does is that it serves as a glorified queue or a high-end buffer system wherein you can store data uh, over a period of time and then you can read it. So Flume is reliable, fault tolerant, scalable, manageable and customizable. So to wrap up in this particular lesson, we understood the need for Flume and the advantages of Flume. That's all for this lesson.